I know for the longest time now I've been speaking about the shift that is happening in the atmosphere and I am also aware that there's people who obviously don't understand the meaning of it who's not really fully spiritually equipped to understand what that means I'm going to try and shed a bit of light on what that means with the help of the Holy Spirit so if we look around us and what is happening we need to pay attention we need to pay attention in stuff that is happening in nature we need to pay attention in behavior human behavior even animal behavior we need to pay attention to the world what is going on around us things that are trending things that are out of place things that way that things are being done obviously change is inevitable and change needs to happen there's an atmosphere taking place a change uh, taking place in the atmosphere meaning that things are shifting around for certain people to make way for certain things to happen in the world Jesus spoke and he said that we need to keep watch we have to watch if you read the Word of God all the prophets warned us from back back in the Old Testament coming into the New Testament the Apostles wrote there's a lot of warnings about things that's going to happen in the end times as we move towards the end times as we move towards the rapture and as we move towards the coming of Christ the second coming but as children of God we need to be aware of the signs and we need to make it an effort to understand what is going on around us so when I say there's a shift in the atmosphere lately we've all we've been seeing is clouds we've been seeing clouds and we've been experiencing rain and you need to understand that when you go back into the Old Testament what the um, children of Israel the children of God have been experienced during their time of sowing or before that time of sowing was something called the former rain so it's a rain that would take place to help um, cultivate the ground to set the ground ready for people to sow so if you've been sowing in the past now remember we don't love the way the Israelites did back then but we have different ways of sowing we are Gentiles so obviously we cannot match our sowing and our struggles with the way the Israelites have but what I'm trying to say is that you might have been sowing tears you might have been sowing sacrificing time you might have been sacrificing financially to make sure your children has gone to a good school to make sure that they grew up um, in a good community we've made sacrifices where we had to help sick people out and you come to a point where God has taken that person um, home and you just feel that your your efforts that you've put into helping that person was all in vain there was things that you've sown whether you've done it knowingly or not knowingly but God has noticed God has noticed what we have sown whether it's our prayer life fasting and praying reading his word growing doing things to please him out of the fear of God and that is when we sow we sow into our spiritual life our spiritual well-being is more important to God than anything else and I'm saying this because in 3 John 3 John um, he opens up there's only one chapter he opens up by saying that beloved I pray that you are healthy and that all is well with you just as your spiritual or your spirit is growing your spirit is prosperous pros, prospering just as your spirit is doing good because spiritually once we've received God as our Lord and Savior we spiritually we are intact God is happy with our, our, our spiritual state but we need to grow our spirit needs to grow and our spirit needs to get more in tune with God we need to be able to hear from God walk with God understand what God is doing in season and out of season we need to be familiar get our familiarize ourselves with the way that God works because imagine getting into heaven and not being able to identify certain things I mean growing your spiritual well-being right now I feel is most important than anything else we cannot go to heaven just um, knowing a few chapters um, you'll be allowed into heaven I do understand it but I don't think we'll you know we'll will be placed in in a in a position in heaven a good position that you know where God can really use you in 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 the afterlife in eternity when when he starts you know um, his new Jerusalem on earth which is going to happen so we need to focus on growing our spiritual well-being now getting in touch with God and identifying how he works identifying who he is identifying his different seasons so when I've been speaking about the the, the, sh the shift in the atmosphere 
I've come to realize that this is the latter rain and with the latter rain comes harvest time. So it's time to harvest what you've sown. It's time to go now and, and, and reap what you've sown. You, have, you will be in a position to reap what you show, you've sown. The benefits will be there. And so with all this rain going on around us, I just pick up the sense that this is the latter rain. This is the rain where God is saying, you know, the harvest is ready in terms of souls. People, we need to go out and we need to speak the word of God. We need to preach so that people can understand what is God doing in our lives, in their lives, in the lives of people around us, in the world, globally, universally. You know, there's so much that God is doing. His goodness is everywhere. And most of the time, everything that the world is reflecting back is negativity. It's states of deaths, it's states of infections, it's states of what's going on around us. We should be focusing on the Word of God. And we should be focusing on the things that God wants us to enable for us to grow spiritually. John said in third John, in, in the third book of John, that I want you to be healthy and grow as your spirit grows. If you understand how salvation works, your spirit grows, salvation changes you. You grow and you want to become more Christ-like and you want to become more God-like and you want to do the things for God. We want to store up treasures in heaven. So that is what's happening. And that is what's happening all around us. We need to be in tune with the movement of God. Every time God wants to move, something needs to happen. The atmosphere cannot stay the, uh, stay the same. Landmarks cannot stay the same. Uh, agriculture cannot stay the same because we're going into a new dimension and we're going into a new atmosphere. And I cannot stress how important it is for you to be able to grasp it, to grasp that, to go with the flow. To be able to say, God, show me what's happening around me and whatever you're doing, don't do it. Whatever you are busy doing, don't do it without me. And that's basically the mindset I have. I might not understand fully, but I can sense in my spirit that something big is happening. Something is going to happen. And my prayer is that you will go along with this atmosphere change and that you will realize the importance it is for your spirit to grow so that you can understand the things and the ways of God. Because there's so much mysteries going on around us. God has so much mysteries that he wants to reveal to us as children of God. There's so much that he wants us to know and he wants us to experience. He wants us to experience heaven on earth. He doesn't want us to just live miserable lives. You're saved, you're a child of God, you're a Christian, but you're miserable most of the time. Experience heaven on earth. So when you do go to heaven, there'll be a next level of heaven to experience. I hope I've encouraged you in a way just to, to sort of like briefly show you what it means when there's a change in the atmosphere. If you look back into the word of God, you will find that every time God needed to take a new prophet to a next level, he needed to take the Israelites to a next level, there's something that needed to happen. They needed to leave Egypt, something needed to be happened, sacrifices took place. They needed to, to, to cross the river. The waters parted, but they needed to cross that river. They were in the they were in the wilderness. They needed to cross the second river. Same thing happened. Every time there's a shift in the atmosphere, you get to go to the next level in growing and growing with God. And my prayer is that you will grasp that. I know I probably haven't really done justice to it. But I hope that I've brought just a little bit of insight on what it is for you to grow spiritually and what it is to understand the shift in the spirit realm and the shift in the atmosphere. One of the most important um, shifting in atmosphere that comes to mind is the, the, the Great Flood. If you look at and you study what happened around the Great Flood, what happened before it and what happened after it, after the flood hit um, and it rained and poured for, for well more than 40 days the earth was drenched the earth was you know obviously um, the ground there was a change in the ground if you understand in the beginning when sun came into the world and how God has set the earth up um, to produce um, uh, fruit and vegetation and grass and all that it happened in a manner where everything was pure. So when God designed the earth and he designed the Garden of Eden, you know, the, the ground was pure. 
and you know vegetation grew with us out without us having to work it and when the curse came upon adam god said that you will work you will have to work the ground in order for you to eat okay if you then understand that we were only allowed they were only allowed to eat vegetation it was the only fruit that was available for them once what happened after the uh, the flood and everything settled down you can just imagine that the ground was a mess but it had to happen because god had to prepare the ground and the atmosphere for the next level of um you know where, wherever he was taking the world to and wherever he was taking his children to so from then on he, if you read what happened after the flood he gave he gave um noah and his children then the authority and the and the permission to to now they are able to eat animal now we are able to eat meat um before that we we couldn't they didn't i don't think they did they were all just vegetarians and so obviously they could eat animal because um or meat uh, they they were allowed to do that because if you understand um the ground obviously it had to take some years for trees to start growing again and for you know um uh vegetation to start popping up and all these kinds of thing and then men then eventually had to because of that curse that was given in genesis um men had to start working the ground in order to eat so if you understand what has happened there that all the beasts of the of the of the earth on the earth we all lived in unison we were all there was no predators you know there was no um need for us to hunt and for them to hunt and i think once sin came into the world and once the fall happened that was when after the flood when we had this thing where animals would attack men and men would attack animals and there was the predator and the prey um you know thing coming in and also i believe the predator and prey thing came in so that there can be some sort of a limit as to what we can eat so that we don't just eat up all the animals <laughs> so they had to, hunting had to happen and you know some anim- animals um were wild and some weren't as wild and so you know for the flood to have happened that is my bottom line is that it needed to change the earth it needed to change things um from what god has planned it to be into the state that it is now so if we're looking at all the rain around us if we're looking at the atmosphere just changing yes there's climate change and it is normal because that is where we are going towards that is what needs to happen and if you understand what happens in the book of revelation with all the earthquakes happening the hail storms ha- uh, storms happening if you continue to read you'll find that there the mountains will be split apart you will find that there's going to be a third of the sea will turn into blood you will find that some of the streams and the rivers will dry up and there will be no so it's all just climate change it's all just things that need to happen so looking outside and seeing this weather on a daily basis just real just goes to show and it just makes me realize more and more that Christ is working that God is busy working and all these are birth pains that's going to push us towards the end times let alone the actions of men let alone of what's happening around us with technology and with the epide- uh, the pandemic and all that things need to shift around to make a way for the future it's going to be a better future for some and it's going to be n- not so good a future for some people but i understand i believe if you understand the word of god and you've seen the trend that has been happening in the word of god and all the stories that we've read about and the situation that people find themselves in but this is just one of those moments and it's an exciting moment because it just makes us realize that god is alive and god is working and we are moving towards something and that something is going to take us into eternity and it's going to take us into a place that place that is going to be um that is going to be good where all the saints all the saints will end up serving and worshiping god alone and that no matter what trials we are going through and no matter what situations we have that we face you know earthly and worldly situations god is still in control and god is leading the way and is using people like you and I to to bring an understanding to what is happening and what is taking place in this world 
so that we can focus on him and focus our energy on him and not things that is not going to produce any good in our lives. We need to work for the future generations and the future of this earth. Stay blessed, beloved.